Hey there, welcome to the Rocket Node YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a 5M server, set up TX Admin, how to use our framework installer, and some tips and tricks that you should know while using the node. And if you don't know what Rocket Node is, well, Rocket Node is a hosting provider that provides fast, reliable, and affordable services, just as my background says. So let's get started with setting up a 5M server. One of the easiest things you could ever do with the node, of course. First, we want to go on ahead and go to rocketnode.net. After that, we'll go under game hosting, GTA 5M. And then we'll be brought to the uh, plan page where we have stuff like starter and developer for, you know, the dev developers premium and platinum for you know starting out servers ultimate and enterprise for somewhat established servers and then premier and god for those servers that go above and beyond but for me i think i'm going to go with enterprise because you know i have somewhat of a well established server so we'll just select that plan then we'll be brought to the billing website where we have stuff to fill out like giving it a name, which I'm going to call it Rocket Rat RP, and uh, making sure that we understand that if we want to go above 48 slots, we need one sync. Under that, we'll have the additional services, such as Enterprise Support, which gets you a dedicated support member, and quick, easy access to support, along with support for scripts and other essential things that is that you might need help with. The script installation service is where we install five hand-picked scripts that you want. I think those two are pretty self-explanatory. And we'll click continue on that one. After that, we'll be brought to the cart where you can enter pro a promotional code, which I will enter 25 off. And this will get you 25% off your service. Make sure to use this code at checkout. Then we'll scroll down and we'll be met with billing details. So you'll have, uh, if you're an existing customer, you'll have this information filled out for you. But if you're a new customer, you just go on ahead, click create a new account, and you'll just enter all your address, name, and stuff. And that's about it for that. But since I'm an, exist since I'm an existing customer, I'll just go on ahead, click my name, keep it moving down to the payment methods now you got paypal which is paypal if you don't know what that is don't use it you got stripe which is a credit card processor where you enter your card de details below and then you have cryptocurrency which is stuff like bitcoin and everything else but for this one i'm going with paypal let's keep it moving on down to the captcha where don't forget to do it at the end i'm going ahead and fill that out then we'll move on to the right side where we have, I have written agreed to the terms of service. Make sure to check that off. Then after you're done, go on ahead and hit check out. After that, you'll be brought to either a paid invoice screen or this screen, but we're just going to go on ahead. I'll pay for the service and uh, I'll be with y'all in a moment. After completing payment, you'll be brought to the invoice, but we don't really need to look at that. So we'll go on ahead to the home section where we'll be brought to the dashboard. Here you can upgrade, manage, cancel, look at some news, or even open a ticket if you need to. But uh, that's about it for this website. So we'll go on ahead to the next website, which really is how we manage the service. And this could be any easier. Sorry about that. It could be any easier. Now, when you go to panel.rocketnode.net, you may be asked to log in. If so, just use your billing account information as they're all synced up. But I'm already logged in, as you can see. And when you log in, you'll see this screen. Here is where you can select the server you wish to work on, which in my case is Rocket Rat RP. That's the server I want to manage, so let's select it. Now, you'll be brought to the console page. Here at the top, you'll see CPU usage, memory usage, and disk usage. Below that, you'll have the server console, which will show the output of 
the five M server, let's say starting scripts and who access TX admin maybe. To the left, you'll see the server status, how many players are playing, the server IP, usages and uh, data amounts. Below that, you'll see the main control buttons such as start, reboot, stop and shut down. Under that, you'll see some data outbound and data inbound graphs. Let's keep it moving to the file manager. Here is where you can edit text documents, essentially, like the server CFG or edit a script if you want to easily update it. Please don't install resources through here, as it most likely will not work. Let's move on to the next one, which are these databases. We'll come back to this when we need to. Next is schedules. Here you can schedule a restart, stop start or anything that you exactly want the service to do automatically can be scheduled here so you can give it a name select if you want it to go for like five minutes one hour a day of a month uh, a certain month or a day of a week let's move on to the users pad users category here you have uh, sub users which is something you would give to developers administrators or anything like that so for example i want to give devin control basically access to the console start the server stop the server restart it <clears throat> or the ability to manage users or manage the files on the server maybe i want him to do that and then after i'm done selecting all those permissions i just click invite the user but since uh, this is the owner well i can't do that Let's keep it moving. Here we have the backups, which is uh, where we can make a backup, essentially, of the server's files. We can give it a name or even select what files we don't want to be included in the backup and lock the backup from being deleted until unlocked, of course. So we'll click the X button on that and go down to network. There's not much that needs to be seen here besides the IP address and the port of the server. We'll come back to this if you decide that you want to use TX admin. Let's keep it moving to the server startup. Here is where you manage and put a lot of important information, so please keep this in mind. First, we want to make sure we fill in this before we start the server. The 5M license key allows our server to boot and register with 5M and show up on the server list, so we definitely want to fill that out. So, to get started, we want to go on ahead under there, and we want to go on ahead and copy that URL right there, and go to the website. After that, you may be asked to do a CAPTCHA. Hopefully, you're human. If not, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to go on ahead and do that real quick. Got to select the boats. Oh, that's a boat. All right. After you completed the CAPTCHA, you'll be asked to sign in. We'll do that. Now... Since I have a CFXRE account, it signed me in automatically, but you may be directed to the CFX forms to make an account. All right, let's keep it on with uh, the next part, which is going to be adding a new server. Put that button right there. Give it a name. And then right here, we have the IP address section. So let's go on ahead and get that. We can get that from the network tab. Just copy the IP address right there. Paste that sucker in. There we go. Now we want to go on ahead and pick the server type, which is VPS. And I like to put NA there. But you could put Rocket, Node, Idle, Wong Tong, Chicken Wang, anything you want. Go on ahead. After you do that, you want to go on ahead and click Create. Then you want to go on ahead and copy the key they have listed there. And go to Server Startup again and put it right in that 5M license section. Beautiful. Now, the next thing we definitely want to change is the server host name. So, we'll go on ahead and give that server a name. Rocket Rat RP. Don't wear it out. And then after that, we're done. The server is ready to start. Now, you may be saying, how do I upload files to the server? Well... This is also a very simple process and a very simple program we need to get. First, let's go on ahead and get the program we need. 
which is called WinSCP. We'll go on ahead, head on the website, click that download now link. And download one more time, and then it will download it for us. After that, you'll want to go through the installation instructions and just follow the installer like you would install any other program. But I already have that installed, so we don't need to install it again. After installing WinSCP, we want to go on ahead down to the server settings page and click launch SFTP. After clicking that, you may be greeted with a box that asks you to trust the certificate. If you are, just click yes. Now, after that, you'll be greeted with this screen where you enter your account password, which is the password for the panel. And then you'll be greeted with the server files. Here, you can upload your scripts, edit configuration files, or really do anything you need. So you got your uh, files here, and you know if you wanted to put vMini in here, you could open up a file manager and just drag and drag and drop vMini's files in there. So that's pretty much it on how to put server files or something in the server. Now let's move on to setting up TX Admin, which really seems to be a very common thing that people mess up. So if you're looking to set it up, please follow me closely. First. We want to go on ahead and enable TX Admin using the button. And then this will do a lot of stuff for us, but we just want to make sure that it's set up correctly. So first you want to go to the network tab and then look at the, at the port that is not listed as primary. And you want to make sure that this port right here, you go, you can copy and everything. This port right here matches the port listed right here under TX Admin port. If not, you want to just replace that with that port. And then you'll also see under here, it says enable TX admin, which is perfectly fine. Now we want to go to the server console. And if your server is running, shut it off. If it's not, just click start. And then wait a few minutes, seconds. Almost said minutes. And then TX admin will start. Once you see this, that means TX admin is ready to be set up. We'll go on ahead unto, under the server modifications thing. We'll go to TX admin, which will bring us to TX admin. Copy the code that's listed right here. Put that into the pen. All right, click link account. This will bring us to the authorized TX admin. We'll click continue. After that, we'll make a backup password. After making a backup password, we'll go on ahead and indicate that we do agree to the CFX Terms of Service. All right. And now this is the most important thing to follow. Please do not mess this up. As if you do, your server has a chance of breaking. Now let's click Next. Enter the server name. Rocket Red RP, click next, then deployment type. Do not, and I repeat, do not click popular templates. I don't care if it says recommended or not. Do not click it. It will break your server. Do not use it. We are clicking local server data because that's the one that doesn't break your server at all. So we'll click that. Then in this box, we'll put slash home. And lowercase slash home slash container. And then click next. And then this will be filled out for you automatically. Then click save. And then click save and start server. After that, TX admin set up. Everything looks good in here. Now let's move on to the next thing. Which is setting up the framework installer. So let's get started by going to the Framework Installer tab and then clicking Install on whichever framework you want to use. For this demonstration, I'm going to use KubiCore because I want a KubiCore server. Now you give it a minute to load its, uh, load its pickles and put all the ducks in a row for you. Now after the pre-made installs, 
we'll go on ahead and do a few things before we start the server. First, we want to go over to server settings and click the reinstall server button. No, this will not delete any server files. Now, we'll let that go. Should stop the server real quick. Let's help it out. We'll say run an installer, give it a few seconds. All right, and it's done. Now we'll go on ahead and do one last thing. We'll go to the server startup page and copy the 5M license that you see right here. Go to the file manager, go to server.cfg and put that right here. After that, just click save content and then you should be good to go. We'll go ahead and start the server up. Only takes a few seconds to get, get going. And now you're ready to go. Everything has been set up for you. All the QB core dependencies are all working. That's pretty much how you use our framework installer. And that applies to all of our frameworks as well. They all work right out the box. So now let's move on to the last thing. Some tips and tricks to learn how to use Rocket Note in the most efficient way. The first tip I will always recommend is keeping all your resources gathered together in folders. This allows for great organization. And if anybody ever needs to go look into anything or look into stuff, they can just simply go to default maps or go to managers or something like that. And it works right out the box. It couldn't be any easier than that. Next, another good tip is don't ever delete anything out of the main folders. So Alpine, yeah, pretty much Alpine is the only thing you should never delete. Don't touch it. Don't delete it. Don't do anything with it. Delete the cache sometime like you know every few weeks every week something like that just remove the cache it gives the server a nice flush next logs you know you can delete that that's just like a log of any errors or anything there's not going to be much stuff there and you know that's pretty much it don't also don't touch the tx data folder unless you want to reset tx admin or something like that which you, re you really don't need to do another thing is the server activity page here you'll see stuff like who reinstalled the server who viewed the contents of the server cfg and this might be important when you have developers people accessing the server and someone does a certain thing and you need to find out what in the world they did this really can help with that so use the server activity if you need to and the next thing is Make sure you stay up to date on your payments. If you do not pay and uh, the service gets suspended after that seven, after seven days of the service being suspended, the files will be terminated permanently and they will not be recoverable. Under any circumstances will the files be recoverable. So just keep that in mind. But besides that, you now have a perfectly working 5M server. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I'll talk to y'all later. We'll be covering a lot more stuff here, so you better stay tuned and stay on it.